Hey YouTubers, it's Tony with Mayberry Mini Trucks. Today is May 7th, 2023. And we have a beautiful day today. I mean, it is just gorgeous. I mean, look at that right there. Is that not absolutely beautiful? It's springtime. Everything is coming to life. And, um... So yeah, but the reason we're doing a video today is that right there. That is a <clears throat> 1994 Subaru van. Its stock number is SB1794. It's a four-wheel drive, five-speed with an extra low first gear. It has air conditioning. Wow. And it has 39,678 original miles, and it is $12,200. And this vehicle was available to uh, for a, uh, a particular individual. That is not going to work. It's not going to happen. And um, so it is for sale. So let's go ahead and check it out. <clears throat> so let me just start by saying the van is absolutely amazing. And I did a quick video when it arrived, and uh, but now I'm going to do a more detailed video. And um, but it's just very, very pretty. It's obviously it's got color. It's not a uh, typical white vehicle. A lot of people like something with a little color. And um, so there you go. Oh man. I wiped it down and I shut the door and now water splatted up. Um, all right, so let's get started. The front of the vehicle is absolutely beautiful. Ding free, dent free. I mean, just a little, I mean, this thing's going to clean up so beautifully. And if you look at the roof, same thing, just absolutely stunning. Now, let's just look down. Let's, let's grade the whole side of the vehicle. Stunning. <laughs> I mean, there you go. One word for the whole side of the vehicle. Just absolutely immaculate. And it's got good tires. Very good tires. And it's four-wheel drive. I mean, there you go right there. And it's called an extra S. The back looks very nice. Um, it does have a little dent right there. Or uh, not a real dent dent, but uh, just a tiny little impression. The back looks beautiful. Look at the rear bumper. Really nice. <clears throat> Now, let's look at this side. Man, oh man, is that nice. But I'm going to say that it does have the slightest little maybe baby impression right there. I'm going to try to show you. Anyway, perhaps you can see it. It's it's extremely difficult to see. So I wonder if I make too big of a deal out of things like this, but I don't think so. But it's really hard to pick up. Anyway, that's about as bad as it gets right there. So let's have some fun and check out the interior here. All right, let's start with the back. So this has shades. It has, you know, curtains in it, which is just so neat. You know, they, they close with Velcro. And then this is fixed, I think. Nope, the whole thing moves. So you can move your curtains however you want. And you can, they're in tracks on the bottom and tracks on the top. So that is just really cool. 
I, I should have bunched them up with the Velcro, but I, I didn't. But anyway, you can Velcro them closed, which is nice. Um, but look at this. Look how beautiful this is. Even the vinyl covered panels are immaculate. Here's the inside of the door. Another immaculate vinyl covered panel. This is your rear windshield washer fluid. This is your radiator cap. Look at the back of the seats. And these are handles that you pull to flip them up, I believe. All right, now let's shut this door. And let's open. There we go. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's an original floor mat. <clears throat> and I am not going to articulate these things all the way, like, because the video is going to be an hour long if I do. But anyway, these articulate all over the place. <laughs> and they're like new. Look how nice the seats are. Look at the headliner. I would put an LED bulb in there. That is so nice. There's your spare tire. Everything, oops. Everything under there looks fantastic. Um, oh man, what did I do? Okay, sorry guys. Um, let's go to the other side and open that door. Now, <clears throat> regarding these windows, let's say you wanna roll the window down, it'll stop right there, but then you have to release it. I don't think I can do this with one hand, but you turn this to release it and then that rolls the rest of the way down the new vehicles don't do that i don't think they let you do that in the newer stuff i could be wrong about that but oh. is your jack under there and that's hinged i'm not going to pretend to know oh look at that heat there is the heat so that button that says rear heater powers that right there. Mystery solved. I was wondering about that the other day. So yeah, good tires. Looking very clean underneath. And it's not like somebody cleaned it. This is how, I mean, I cleaned it, like washed it, but I didn't, I never do the undercarriage. It's, it's just how it, here it comes. Yeah, man, that is so beautiful. So this is like the upper echelon of mini truck. They're actually, I should say, K vans. See, it started right up. I don't know if you can hear that, but it started right up. And this is a four wheel drive, five speed with extra low first gear, which is nice. Extra low first gear is good. If you want to uh, <clears throat> just go very slowly in four wheel drive. And these do really well in the snow. You know, if you have snow, they do extremely well. So we're just poking along here. That means that it's been serviced. That's how we keep track of that. So I'm going to try to show you a view of both the road and the speedometer. So a Subaru has sort of a quasi tack. That one next to the 20 means don't ever exceed that while you're in first gear. The two next to the 40 means don't ever exceed that while you're in second gear. And the three next to the 60 means don't ever exceed that while you're in third gear. Honestly, you would think it's crazy to be anywhere near that in those particular gears. It's way, way too much revving. And that is the biggest 
fault of a Subaru is the engine. Um, you can over rev it. And, you know, you hear these, these reviews and they don't ever mention the engine being kind of delicate. All right, so here we go. This thing just runs fantastic. So there's 60 miles per hour. I'm going to slow down. Because I do want to keep this on the road and not make it a high-speed off-road vehicle because I was going too fast. Oh, look at that dog. Hello. Boy, he looks like he's actually on an adventure. All right, so, boy, did that do nicely. So now we're going to go back. <clears throat> we're going to go up a hill. A fairly steep hill actually quite a steep hill and right now we're in fourth gear and we're just clipping right along I mean it's got low miles it's only got 39,000 miles so that means the engines pretty darn fresh and we're climbing the hill nicely boy is that Sun obstructing my video all right so we're climbing the hill in fourth gear. I'm not going to go put it in fifth gear because I know we actually were accelerating just a little bit there. But the vans are quite a bit heavier than the pickup truck. So I don't expect it's going to accelerate in fifth gear um, <clears throat> going up this hill. But we are accelerating going up this hill in fourth gear, which is, I think, fantastic. All right, fifth gear, there we go. We're in fifth, let's see what happens. <laughs> I lied, I couldn't help myself. All right, so we are holding at 56 kilometers per hour. We did not decelerate, now we're no longer on the hill. We've um, crested, but, um, so that's good. It held our speed in fifth gear. And um, sometimes I'll put a mini truck in fifth gear and, it, and accelerate up that hill. But the vans weigh a fair piece more than the mini truck. And to accelerate in fourth gear, I think is, is, is amply satisfying. Um, and... Uh, and the engine runs fantastic. I'm going to pull over here onto our road. And um, so it runs perfectly. And the air does work. It's a little chilly this morning, but the air works. And um, so there is our test drive. And um, <clears throat> it's a very nice van. I mean, it's just super, super nice, and uh, it's been serviced with full synthetic 5W30 engine oil. We put in a new air filter, a new oil filter. You can get the oil filters lo locally, but not the air filters. They're $20 a piece. We don't charge much for them, and they're of paramount importance. So do pick up some extra air filters. You cannot get them at your local parts store. So get five of them. And put them on the shelf, and then you'll be good for a long time. I recommend you change the oil every 5,000. Um, it's full synthetic oil, so you've got good insurance inside there. Um, but uh, the vehicles will take care of you if you take good care of them. Um, we got the law passed, making these street legal. Uh, Governor Cooper signed our bill into law. And this really just got here last week. So obviously the title is not here yet, but we have applied for it already. That's the very first thing we do is apply for the title, even before we service it. And it takes eight, eight weeks, six to eight weeks for the title to arrive. Now we always sell the vehicles prior to the title arriving. And then when the title gets here, one of the girls in the office will call you and say, hey, your title's here. Would you like us to send it to you certified mail or would you like to come pick it up? 
If you're a long distance customer, we'll send you a copy of it. You print it, sign the copy, send it back, then we mail out the original and it will already be notarized. Uh, if you're a long distance customer, we uh, don't require you to pay for it in advance. That's kind of something that we do. We're very, I don't know, can you say we're proud of that? I don't know. But we're, we're really happy with that arrangement. I think that's the right way to put it. We're happy with that arrangement because in a world that we live in, nobody trusts that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. So we kind of like saying you don't even have to pay for it until we show up because we're confident that we have communicated to you as 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 well as can be done the actual condition of the vehicle and then when we show up we want you to be at least satisfied have your expectations at least met if not exceeded and we've got a 100 percent track record we've never had that go bad uh so you pay for the you just put a deposit down equal to the delivery fee which is two dollars per mile one way so if you're 200 miles away, the delivery fee is $400. And then when we arrive, you then um, pay for the vehicle. And um, But you don't have to buy it, you know, but we've never had that happen. So we've got a perfect track record. You will get the title. It, it will take some time. You can take possession of the vehicle um, uh, first, and then it'll make wonderful yard art. Uh, you won't be able to tag it until you get your title. Um, but, uh, and if you want to pay for it up front, we'll hold on to it. That's fine. We do that once in a while, not too often. Most of the time people want their vehicle, even though the title is, you know, two or three weeks down the road. Um, so enough said of that. And Let's see, what else, what else, what else? I think that about covers it. Um, there's really not much to say about this vehicle. It just is fabulous. It's like a rare bird. It's a, it's a, um, a four-wheel drive Subaru van. Oh, I started, there was one of, I knew there was something else I wanted to touch on. Um... You know, I've noticed these tutorial videos on this kind of K-truck or that kind of K-truck. And I have to tell you, I am not <clears throat> completely satisfied with them. They almost seem like promo videos on my cool truck that I have. And I think the customer is better served... <sighs> And, and, and a lot of the information is not accurate. So, um, and I've owned over 5,000 mini trucks. So I'm pretty qualified to, to say, oh, that isn't right. That's incorrect. Um, and so caveat emptor, buyer beware. Um, call me and talk to me if you have any questions. I would be more than happy, whether you buy a mini truck from me or not, to help in the education process because mini trucks are new. They're, they're a new thing. We're all learning, and I would be happy to share with you what I know. And if you buy one, great. If you say, you know, these aren't for me, that's no problem at all. I won't have any problem with that whatsoever. And uh, so, um, but... There is no best mini truck, and 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 I I really believe that because certain brands are good for certain things, but there's not one best mini truck, and people define best in different ways. What does best mean? So um, you know, um, so I know that doesn't conclusively put that issue to rest because it's a a very broad topic there are five different major manufacturers and each one has its little faux pas and subaru their faux pas are the engine the engine's not a bad engine but the engine is susceptible 
do damage because it's so quiet. It runs like butter because it's four cylinders. It doesn't have any extra power. In fact, the Mitsubishi has the most power and the Mitsubishi has the most leg room, uh, which I find very interesting because I haven't seen that on any of the reviews. It also has the most belly room, um, the Mitsubishi um, mini cab. Uh, and, and the Subaru has great interior room, but not as much knee room as the Mitsubishi. So there's one, uh, one thing right there, but um, the Subaru can be over revved, and because you can't hear it, it's way in the back, and it's super quiet. So I have had five mini truck engines that ha that where the engines are damaged. Every single one of them is a Subaru. That means something, and and again, it's operator error. It's not that Subaru didn't make a good engine. Um, but you can't hear the thing running, uh, and when you're on the road, you do hear the road noise and not the engine. So you do have to be aware of that. And the engine is your back bumper. That's the other thing. So if you're backing up and you back into a tree, the first thing that gets crumpled is your engine cover, and the engine is not far behind that. Um, that's another thing. The mirrors on a Subaru are kind of weak. All right, no big deal. You just replace them. In fact, this mirror here has been taped. Um, <clears throat> you can see right here, somebody split this Subaru mirror and they taped it. It does kind of, it, it holds. I mean, it holds, but can it be replaced? Yes, it can. So Subaru mirrors, not the greatest. Um, Subarus are excellent for on-road asphalt travel and... Um, in the woods occasionally, but you have to be extremely vigilant because the engine is so far to the rear, the axis point is your rear axle. So when your front wheel goes over a six inch cutoff stump, now your engine is actually closer to the ground. Not a good situation for being off road. It's much better to have your engine in the middle of your vehicle, which is a Mitsubishi Suzuki Daihatsu. Um, some are more forward, some are more rearward, but those are mid-engine vehicles, is my description. And that way, it's always at the same height above the ground. It's not like the Subaru, where it is behind the rear axle, and therefore gets lower to the ground as the front of the truck gets raised off the ground. I hope I'm not belaboring this, but I am just trying to educate and I love the Subaru. The Subaru is great, but it does have its things you have to be aware of that I've learned over the years. So I hope that you appreciate that information. I really hope that I'm not just um, annoying people with this information. I hope that you find it advantageous. And thank you for watching my video.